Amen. Thank you, choir. I could welcome everyone out to Warrensville Baptist Church this morning. If you are visiting with us, we especially welcome you today. Thank God for giving us a Sunday. We can come out and worship and to praise Him. Amen. What a blessing that is, as they were singing about right there. Such a blessing to have the Lord in your life. And we have this time that we can spend with Him on Sundays. Amen. Uh, in the way of announcements this week, um, Wednesday night at 6, 6 p.m., Wednesday night, 6 p.m. is Bible study. We moved it back 30 minutes until time changes. Uh, so 6 p.m. Wednesday night. Uh, around 6.40, choir practice will start. So that's this coming Wednesday night. Remember the Lottie Moon offering here for January. Today will be the last day of that uh, to reach our goal of $1,000 for the Lottie Moon offering. Um, Today at Phoenix Baptist Church, they will be celebrating um, uh, Miss Jan's 65th year of playing the piano for them. So uh, we're so happy for her. There's most, a lot of people don't even live 65 years anymore, you know, and she's been playing the piano for 65 years. And she's always with us on Wednesday nights, and we appreciate her so much. And in that uh, that celebration, I'm glad they're doing that for her. Next Sunday, uh, Brother Lynn Powers will be with you. I will be out of town uh, next weekend for a couple of days. So Brother Lynn uh, will be with you next Sunday. Are there any other announcements? Very short today. In the way of birthdays. We had Wendy Patrick on the 24th, Scott Patrick on the 31st coming up, and anniversaries, we have J.C. and Brenda Shoemate. So let's all stand this morning and sing happy birthday to them. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you.
this morning. I have um, so remember Miss Donna May. She's I've talked to her and she's feeling a lot better and stuff. So let's continue that uh, for her healing. Uh, remember Janet Johnson this coming Thursday. Janet will be having surgery, uh, so let's be in prayer for her. Uh, remember Janie Ashley. Uh, she's doing a lot better now that she is over COVID. Uh, remember Johnny's son, Christopher. He'll be having uh, knee surgery in, in tomorrow morning. So remember him in prayer. Uh, the flowers that you see uh, before us this morning are in, in honor and memory of Pat Jenkins from the funeral Friday. Uh, so continue to remember Linda and, and Russell and Steve and Jill and that family uh, during this time of their lost. To the 12th okay this is the second time yeah <laughs> second time it's been changed right I think so it's February 12th okay so let's remember Janet on this Wanda Benny and Patsy. <laughs> what was the last one? Heather Pennington. Heather Pennington. Okay. Remember her? Okay. Let's remember this one. Kit. Okay. We have some traveling today, so let's pray for traveling mercies for them. I think Jerry's coming home from Arkansas, and and uh, Jim and Corbin and Alex are coming home from Florida, so. Any others? Okay, let's remember her. Okay. Liam. Amen. Let's remember this. Pray for that family. Any others? And spoken by a raise of hands this morning. Father God, we just love you so much today, Lord. We just thank you for each one that's gathered here this morning today. Father, as they come, Lord, just cry out to you all these names that's been mentioned, Father, that needs prayer. God, we just take them and lay them at your throne right now, Father, and I just pray if it's your will, God, right now that you heal and touch and be with those that are traveling and sick. Uh, be with the ones that's lost a loved one this week, Father, and, and God, just pray for the ones facing surgery also. Lord, be with them. Uh, Father, everything that we do, we want to give you praise for that. We pray for our service today. Father, be with us during the service, everything that we sing or say. God, we just pray that it'll be to honor you. Father, I just love you, honor you, and praise you this morning. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.
first time we have the tools that I have. We just ask that you be with Jack this day to bring us a message. We thank you for all the many, many blessings of life. And go with us now and keep us safe with your travel.
to turn and shake hands this morning. <laughs> I had to go get some water. Everybody knows how great um, some of the cakes are around here. And I passed by one this morning. Bobby sitting there, and there's one big piece left. And on top of it, it said Gale. And I thought, mm, I better eat that. <laughs> you know? It's never good for a diabetic when you don't have anything on your stomach. So right now, you will get your money's worth <laughs> today. Amen. Amen. And today, Matthew 14, we're going to look at verses 22 through 33. And uh, I've been excited about this. I've been thinking about it a long time and, and kind of studying on it. And, and the name of it is... My, my um, sermon today is pretty simple. It's just get out of the boat, you know. And, and we're going to look at Peter today and see what he went through and see why he got out of the boat and then what caused him to get out, amen. And um, it's all because led uh, through uh, Christ speaking to him uh, today is what basically what we'll look at. So when you get to our Matthew 14, 22 through 33. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, boisterous he was afraid and began, and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? 
And when they were come uh, into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Father, thank you this morning for your word. Lord, I thank you for your spirit today, God. And I just pray right now, Lord, come in and fill us this morning. Speak the words through me today, Father. I'm not able to produce upon my own. And God, everything that is said and done will be to glorify you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So the Christian life is supposed to be uh, kind of an adventure on which we walk by faith, right? We step out uh, into the unknown if God's called us to step out. But we can't do that uh, if, if our faith, if we don't have that faith, we stay in the boat and we never step out. Uh, and this reminded me one time I heard a story about uh, there, was a, uh, there was a tourist and he was out visiting all these biblical places and he was going, you know, he was overseas and he was going from place to place. And, and all of a sudden he came up on uh, a beach area that was at the Sea of Galilee and there was a sign hanging there in a little boat. And it said, free boat rides out to where Jesus and Peter walked on the water. And he said, oh boy. So he jumped in that boat with a couple other people, you know. And the captain of that boat took them out right in the middle of the lake, there, the Sea of Galilee. And, and he stopped and he said, all right, fellas. He said, right here is exactly where Jesus and Peter walked on water. And at that time, they were looking around, and they spent a few minutes there, you know, and that tourist looked at the captain, and he said, all right, I've seen enough. He said, take me back to shore. And the captain looked at him, and he said, you didn't read the sign, did you? He said, the sign said, free boat rides out to the place where Jesus and Peter walked on water, but it's $50 for you to get back to shore. And the tourist just was, he was outraged and he was mad. He said, I can't believe this, that you charge $50 to take us back out to shore. He said, no wonder Peter got out of the boat and walked back for these kind of prices. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to examine Peter's life when he walked on water here today. And we all know it wasn't because he was charged to go back, right? The reason he went back is because when the Lord spoke to him, he minded the Lord and he had the faith to do it. And Jesus didn't have to say a lot, did he? What did he say? He said, come. One word is all he had to say. He didn't have to beg him. He didn't have to. And you know, when I thought about this, I thought, well, what about those other old boys? They didn't attempt. To, they, evidently, they weren't swimmers. The only thing I can figure out. But why did he walk on water and how did he walk on water? And most importantly, what did he learn from that experience when he stepped out in faith with Christ? And what can we learn from that experience today? So the Gospel of Mark and John, they, they tell the stories of Jesus walking on the water, but they never mention uh, about, about Peter here and how he took a stroll. Mark and John didn't tell that. Only Matthew did. So all the Gospels kind of recorded, though, um, in the first Gospels of what happened before this. So I want to give you just a little history, and then, and then we'll go. So right here, just before this story, remember John the baptizer was Jesus' cousin, and he had just been beheaded by King Herod at this time. And when Jesus heard about it, he wanted to get away from the crowds because he knew they were going to come and try to kill him also, Jesus had compassion, though. He had compassion on the crowds, and this is when he's getting ready to feed the 5,000 uh, at this time. And the Bible tells us that he fed 5,000 men, not including women and children. So you could have looked at ten or 15,000 people uh, could have been there uh, strong that day when he fed all of them. And amazed by all that Jesus had done and what he was doing, the crowd wanted to make him the king. They wanted him to be like Moses. They wanted Jesus to, to be their Messiah and that, that would bring them bread from heaven and get them out of bondage. And they were, they were following him and begging him to be their king. But Jesus knew a better plan. And the story kind of goes like this. In Matthew 14, 22, immediately Jesus made his disciples to get into the boat and go before him to the other side. And while he was with the multitude, 
he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And now when everything came, he was there alone. Now here we see Jesus spending time in prayer again. Jesus loved to pray, didn't he? He said he needed to pray. And somehow we think we can get without it. Somehow we think we can go a day without praying to our Savior when the very Son of God said he couldn't do it without praying to the Father. If I ask right now, all right, let everybody raise their hands. Who's already got up this morning and prayed to God? Would everybody be able to raise their hand? Or would you be kind of embarrassed this morning thinking, well, here I have come to worship and I ain't even prayed for the service. I hadn't prayed before I got to church this morning. God, everything that happens, I want to, I want to receive all the spirit. I want to receive everything I can get this morning into my life because I need you. And I need you this week. So the disciples did what Jesus told them to do. They got in the boat and they began to cross the lake. But then they, things kind of started to turn worse, didn't it? So the Bible says when evening came, he was all alone. But the boat was now in the midst of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. See, the Sea of Galilee at this time, and I think it still is, it's kind of notorious for quick storms to come up on. So the Bible tells us and how it describes things, and it looks like the storm probably began sometime around 8 p.m. that evening, but it continued, the Bible says, through the fourth watch, which could have been from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning, right before the sun comes up. So the disciples had been struggling. They'd been struggling with this, these winds and everything for eight or nine hours. They were exhausted. They were stuck in the middle of this lake. They were drenched. They were weary. And they were chilled to the bone and wondering how they were going to make it back to shore. Out in the middle of this storm. And before we move on to the story, let's stop right here just for a second and think about something. I want us to think about the storms of life that we go through. And let's start thinking about the question right here. Were the disciples in the will of God or out of the will of God? When they encountered this storm in their life. Did the storm take the disciples by surprise? Absolutely. They didn't have a weather app. To tell them what was coming did they? Did the storm take Jesus by surprise? Absolutely not. He's the controller of them. So why did Jesus let them get out of the, get in the boat, cross the lake, when he knew a storm was coming in their life? Do you think there are some lessons to be learned right here that only could be learned in the midst of the storm in your life? Do you think sometimes the storms we face are the results of disobedience and God's correction and discipline upon our life? Other times the storms we face come not because of that we've been disobedient uh, to God or God's will, but because we have been obedient and God needs to teach us something and let our faith grow in him. Another thing to keep in mind is, is about the storms that we face is the knowledge of God and, and the knowledge God gives us when we go through storms in our life and how he teaches us to go through them. And while the disciples here was in prayer and Jesus was in prayer on the mountain, do you think he was aware of what was happening? Do you think he, he knew what the, all the other disciples in the boat were experiencing with this storm in our life? Yes. Do you not think every time we have a storm in our life that he's not with you? He knows everything you're going through every day of your life. Does the Bible not say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you? He's always with you going through everything you're faced with. If Jesus knew, then why didn't he come sooner? Why didn't he rescue them sooner? I trust that Jesus came at the very precise time, did he not? And the best time and the best moment for what they needed. 
And sometimes we may think we're in the storm and it's stretching out and it's lasting forever. And we're praying, God, where are you at? You better hold on. He's going to show up right on time. I promise you, he'll be there right when you need him. Even though we can't always see God in the midst of the storms of life that we're in, we can trust that God sees us through it. And that God has a plan for our enablement and our rescue, and he will come and rescue us as his children. So let's turn our attention now back to the story. Let's see what happens when Jesus shows up. So the Bible says in 25 through 27, Now on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. The King James Version called it a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. How many times have we walked through that storm? How many times have we been sick? We've had a loved one sick. They've been laying in ICU at the hospital, right on their deathbed, wherever it may be, and you're troubled, and you're thinking in your mind, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen with, your, with, with, with my life if something happens right here? And all of a sudden, you can't explain it. There's that still, small voice that speaks to you and says, it's okay. I'm here. How do you think you would have responded if you would have been one of those disciples? I mean, right in the midst of a storm, right in the middle of a lake, and, and right in the middle of the night. Obviously, the disciples were wrong in their assessment. It was a good guess, wasn't it? They thought a ghost was out walking out there to them. Had any of them ever seen anybody walk on water before? Whether the sea was calm or stormy, they'd never seen it, had they? I doubt that any of us, if we had been there, would have said anything else. I mean, what's the matter uh, guys, you, you think you've seen a ghost? It's none other than Jesus. It's our Savior coming to us to help us. And then G Jesus then immediately turned to them and said, Fellas, hey, it's I, it's me. It's Jesus. Don't be afraid. The phrase, do not fear, in various combinations here throughout the Bible is used 64 different times. 64 different times throughout the Bible, it says, do not fear, for God is with us. And the words are always delivered by God or, or a representative of God in the Bible to people who are facing hard times all throughout the Bible. Either God said it, Jesus said it, or a disciple said it, or a prophet said it, someone representing God said, do not fear, God is with you. Amen? I mean, would you have felt better once when you knew Jesus was there? Walking on the water towards you? I mean, we feel a lot better uh, when we're facing a storm in life and we're praying and all of a sudden Jesus shows up. Amen? I would have felt much better. I would have immediately thought, praise God. You know? I mean, Jesus is here to rescue us. Uh, we're going to live. We're going to relief. I'll just be honest with you. Back in March, golly, it's, it ain't going to be long. It's going to be a year right here. Back in March when I was in ICU and on that Thursday, they only give me a 50% chance to live. You know, and I, could, I couldn't talk to them, but I could hear them. And I was thinking to myself, whoa, <laughs> something's got to change, you know? And, it, and there was a storm, and it was flooding in Wilkes, and it was lightning. And she said, I've got to go home earlier. And I just kind of nodded to her and said, just, just very few words, be, be careful. You know, and at 11 o'clock that night when the nurse left my room, it's just like, I don't care if anybody believes me or not, it's just like me standing here talking to you this morning, and he, said, and he spoke to me and said, get up. Amen. And I got up. And I turned the TV on, was sitting there, my feet propped up on the bed. The nurse came back in there and said, what happened to you? I said, he told me, get up. 
You know? When Jesus speaks to you and he answers that prayer and he immediately comes into you, you want to say, Whoa! Amen. The Lord spoke to me today. Amen? And he told me to get it. So the very last thing I would have been thinking about was what Peter was thinking. And when Peter realized this, he immediately thought to himself, hey, here's a great opportunity for me. Do you know what? I'm going to show these old boys something right here. And the Bible says, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to Jesus. When Peter said, Lord, if it's you, the Greek translation for that would be, Lord, since it's you. So there's no doubt here that Peter's mind, he was, he was wanting to walk. He liked to show off a little bit anyways. Did he not? And Peter here was declaring, since it's you, Lord, give me permission to come to you. Just speak the word, Lord, and I'll do whatever you're doing. Do we not say that a lot? Do we not say, Lord, help me through this situation. Help me through this storm. And I'll do whatever you ask me to do. Amen. And then we don't. Well, you know what you should have done? You should go back and get on your knees and say, well, you know I didn't mean that. Guess what? He knew it anyways. Did you notice that none of the other disciples said, yes, Jesus, it's if you, I want to walk on the water. Only Peter did. Amazingly, Jesus right here agreed to Peter's request. And he uttered one little command. He just said, come. And so Peter stepped out of the boat. Isn't that what we should do in life? We say, God, where's my place in this church? What should I be doing to help? Where should I lend a hand? And he's just going to look at you and say, come. I'll show you where you need to be. I'll show you where you need to be helping. And before we move forward, though, let's think about something right here. Over the years, some people have criticized Peter. They talk negative about him. Some have said that Peter was conceited. He was trying to show off. You know, he was probably one of those that was standing up. There, you know, you got about 10 or 11 more back iron towards the back. And Peter's one standing up on front of the boat. And he's looking at Jesus. And he's wanting to look back at them boys and say, Hey, look, Mom, no hands. I tell what we've done with these little kids trying to show off in front of everybody. Well, Peter was probably trying to do the same thing. And when he does, but Peter asked for permission. And then waited for permission to be granted. And that's what we should do. We should drop to our knees and pray to God and say, God, show me where you want me to work. Show me what you want me to do. And lead me into that direction. So if Jesus had said no, then I'm sure Peter probably would have just stayed in the boat. Would he not? But Jesus didn't say. He said, you come to me. And at that moment, the smartest thing Peter could have ever done in his life even when he preached a sermon and 3,000 were saved was he stepped out of that boat and he went to God if you're in a storm in your life and you're praying to God and he's leading you in a direction the smartest thing you can do is step out and go to him and he will answer your prayers so once Jesus commanded uh, to Peter to come uh, he had to obey him did he not and so Peter got out of the boat, and, and can, can anyone criticize that? I don't think so. You know, in some respects, I wish that the story ended right there, that Peter got out of the boat and, and, and the water, and, and period, the story's over with. They had a great time. But the story doesn't end there. As a matter of fact, 1430 says, But when he saw that the wind was boisterous he was afraid and began to sink and he cried out Lord save me there's times in our life we finally realize we're sinking and we've turned to a lot of different things in this world and it takes you to get on your knees and humble yourself and say God save me for you to be pulled out of it and Peter was fully walking on water walking from the boat where everything was going great was it not? And then came the but. You know the story's going to change after that one. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Amen.
Everything just went fine until Peter, Peter took the focus on Jesus and began to focus on the storm. What a whole message we could preach right there, could we not? Of how we're going through storms of life and we're walking along with Christ and he's carrying us through that sand. He's seeing picture, he's reaching down in that water and he's pulling us back up. You know why? Because we stop keeping focus on Christ and start focusing on the things of the world. And when we focus on things of the world, we begin to sink in the world. And we have to remember, we have to humble ourselves like Peter and cry out and say, Father, save me. I've gone too far. And that's what Peter did. I mean, how long did it take Peter to sink when he took his eyes off Jesus? This is a lesson right here. Write this down. A second. You take your eyes off the cross. You take your eyes off God. You take your eyes off Jesus. And you will immediately begin to sink in this world. Keep in mind that the storm never stopped raging while Peter was walking on the water. The wind was still blowing. It was still a bad storm. It never said it stopped then, did it? The wind was still blowing. The waves were tossed about. And, and his sermon on this message, there was a man said this right here. I was reading it. He said he lost his concentration on Jesus. And we talked a little bit about that this morning um, in our Sunday school class on every day how we should be reading or praying something to God, whether it's a chapter or just a verse. Pray something so you can stay concentrated on Christ in your life. Just because we focus on Christ don't mean that the winds and the waves in our life are going to stop. We will still have storms. Peter began to sink in the water. But when it happened, he immediately cried out. He realized how he was sinking. He will realize how he was going to drown if he didn't call out to Christ. And I'm sure Peter was pretty, pretty good swimmer if you think about it. That's all them boys done, right? Was fish. You would think they knew how. I mean, he'd spend his whole life around water, but isn't it interesting that he didn't attempt to do anything? He didn't attempt to even try to swim to get back to the boat? Is that not the way we are? We've been in church. A lot of us was raised in church, were we not? Around church. But do you notice how you can still sink? Do you notice just how you'll still have storms in your life? I mean, his first thought was, I can handle this. I can do it on my own. But rather his first thought was, I better start praying. <laughs> I better cry out to God before it gets worse. Peter prayed one of the shortest prayers that's ever been mentioned in the Bible. Do you realize that? Lord, save me. There's a lot of folks that still need to pray that today. Amen. There's a lot of folks that's worried about a lot in their life when the only thing they need to do is stop and come to this altar and cry out and say, Lord, save me. That's going to change a lot of things for them. Amen. Sometimes there isn't time for a long prayer. Like when you're about to drown in the storms of life. Prayer don't need to be long or detailed. They just need to be sincere and specific on what you're asking for. I call this kind of prayer a flash prayer. I think that God hears and answers all kinds of prayer. Even flash prayers. Even the short ones. That says God help me. The Bible said this. In 31 through 33. <clears throat> and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand. Called him up and said to him. Oh, you a little faith. <clears throat> Why did you doubt? And when they got in the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Jesus didn't rebuke Peter because he wanted uh, to walk on the water. He rebuked him because of his lack of faith, of keeping focused on him. The phrase, all you of little faith, is only one word in the Greek, and it means, 
It's kind of like they use it like a nickname. Oh, little faith. Why did you doubt? And Peter had the faith to get out of the boat, but he didn't have the faith to sustain himself once he was out. There's a difference between short faith and long faith, or shallow faith or deep faith. But in spite of Peter's lack of faith, Jesus was still willing to help him, was he not? But while Jesus continued to stand on the water, he took hold of Peter and he pulled him back up out of the water. On top of the water together, and they walked back over to the boat together. And the moment they were back in the boat, sustained, the wind stopped. And those who had been in the boat had watched the whole scene unfold. All those other disciples. They had never seen anything like this before. And so they cried out, truly, this is the Son of God. And as it brings this sermon to a close this morning, I want us to focus our attention on two lessons here. The first lesson is, to walk on water, you must get out of the boat. And you must have faith to step out of your boat. Now, we want to talk about Peter right here all of a sudden and his lack of faith keeping his eyes upon Jesus. And I might have mentioned this earlier. What about that other group that was still in the boat? What kind of faith did they have? Bible never records one of them said, let me step out and walk on it. And I always thought, Jesus, why didn't you get back in the boat and look at those other ones and said, hey, where's your faith at? Amen? Amen. This is a simple, obvious lesson here, but one that we overlook a lot. You'll never walk on water as long as you stay in the boat. A person can't be in the boat and out of the boat at the same time. It's a choice must be made. What was it we used to call it growing up? You can't straddle the fence. You either got to be for God or you're against God. And to walk with God is to walk by faith. And to walk by faith requires risk sometimes and stepping into the unknown. And we look at this man and this woman of faith in the Bible. Uh, you know, we see different ones throughout the Bible that had faith. They were risk takers. Think about Abraham, how he stepped into the journey of Canaan. And he even lifted his knife to sacrifice his own son. He had that much faith. Think about Moses, how he went before Pharaoh and Esther, stood unannounced. Think about David, how he accepted the challenge from Gol to face Goliath, the giant. None of those folks would have been able to be used by God if they have, had not stepped out of the boat and said, God, here am I. Send me. And we must give credit to Peter for being willing to do that and willing to step out for God as he did. And as long as we stay in the boat, we will never sink. But we will always never walk on water either for Christ. What aspect of the Christian life or ministry have we lacked the faith to be able to step out? Where is our lack of faith? If we're never willing to take a chance to get out of the boat, then we will never walk on water and discover what living for faith is God, for God is all about. It's that faith. It's that faith to where, and I'll, I'll share something with you real quick and we'll go on. It's that faith to where we had a funeral Friday. And Ann and Grant and Isaac was playing and singing. And Isaac couldn't sing. He's had the flu for half a month or something. And he told me, he said, I'm not able to sing. Can I just play? And I said, yeah, son. Everybody loves to hear you play. Just play. And they sung that song. And it was time for him to pick whatever song he wanted to sing. And before, and he, when he sat down, I looked over at him. He said, God just gave it to me. Amen. He said, God just gave me my voice to sing. And I'll be honest with you, you probably sung it better than you've ever Amen. sung it. 
And I texted him later and I said, you know what? Now you know what it's like when you step out and you feel the Spirit of God move on your life and take control. And that's what happened. Did he not? He took over. He said, wait a minute. You've stepped out for me. Let me take over. And he did. Amen. So what, so right here, if we are never willing to take that chance, how can we ever walk by faith? We can't walk on the water by our own wisdom and power. Rather, we have to do it by the wisdom and power of God upon our life. The same thing is true with the Christian life and the Christian ministry. We cannot continue to do the will of God without God's wisdom and power upon our life and everything that we do. The second we take our eyes off Jesus and begin to focus on the world around us, our own thinking and our own strength will cause us to sink because God is not in control. He's not leading us. And Satan will let you sink. And the only way to keep our eyes on Jesus and remain connected to the Lord is through a day-by-day Walk with God, scriptures with God, praying with God, fellowship with God, worship with God. That's the only way. Not just at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings at Warrensville Baptist Church. It's a day-by-day walk, continuous walk, prayer, and connection with him every day. We wouldn't have nearly as many crashes in our life spiritually. If we stopped accepting information from our senses and from the winds and from the waves and from the circumstances and from the world, would we? We crash spiritually because you look for more things in this world than you look for in God. And that's the reason you crash. The Word of God and the Spirit of God will safely Make the storms and challenges go away from your life. We need to step out of the boat. Obeying the command to walk by faith. How do you do that? You start this morning by the altar. We don't need to be like the disciples and just kind of sit back in that boat and say, well, I'm going to play it safe. When God's telling us to step out. Peter stepped out. Do you realize he stepped out of that boat over 2,000 years ago and we're still talking about him? Look what an impact he made. What kind of impact can you make on Warrensville Baptist Church in this community if you'll step out and work for him? And when you're gone, years and years later, they'll still talk about what you've done here at Warrensville. I pray that we will be great risk takers for the kingdom of God and they, we will all step out of the boat amen let us stand as Isaac begins to play this morning the altar is open for anyone that needs to come and pray Name so many, many prayer requests. If I took this this morning and help, you can see all the names I wrote just from this morning. Look how many is on there. People we need to be praying for today. Who wants to step out of the boat today and say, God, here I am, send me. Show me where to work. Show me what to do. I want to be part of, I want to be part of this church. But you need to show me where I need to be. God, I'm going through a storm right now. There's been a storm in my life, and most people don't even know about it. But I've realized now this morning how I'm going to get through it and how I'm going to walk through it. And it's only my faith in you, my faith that I have in you that will lead me and get me through this storm. Who needs to come? Who needs to come this morning?
Anyone else need to come today?